Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem, a postmortem of my Blitz game number 408. My opponent kicked off with uh, c4 here. The English opening, I play knight f6, knight to c3, get pretty standard opening so far. c5, I go for a symmetrical setup. And then he plays the immediate d4, which is uh, very rare and uh, not particularly good because uh, it allows me to gain a tempo. d4, I take it, queen takes. And already you see black has basically equalized knight c6, attacking the queen, and the queen just dropped back to d1, which is one of the better squares. So I had the idea, now oh, the engine approves, I had the idea of playing uh, e6 and then d5. So I played e6 first. My opponent played a3 to build up on the queen side. And um, I didn't play d5 right away, which is probably a mistake. It looks like I need to, if I'm going to play d5, it looks like I need to play it fairly soon. Played bishop e7, not a bad move, but um, uh, what my opponent plays in a couple moves, knight f3, and then I castle, and then right here he plays e4, and now he's got a, a bind on the d5 square, and I'm never getting the move uh, d5 in. So I should have played it in one of those uh, two previous moves if I was going to play it. So I need to think of an alternate plan. I end up going for a hedgehog setup, starting with d6. He goes bishop e2. And you see, you know, I still have this lead in development, but it's not going to amount to a whole lot within this uh, closed position, and white has uh, more space. So so what should have been an edge for black is now basically an even, or maybe even an edge for white, if you believe the engine there. Okay, so I start um, getting my uh, setup going. I, I also wanted to prevent, excuse me, prevent his knight from hopping into the b5 square um, and putting more pressure on my... Uh, this this pawn here, the pawn on d6 is kind of weak in these setups. He's got pressure on the open d file, and he's got these pawns here preventing it from advancing. So this is a lot like a Moroxy bind. Okay, castles, b6. So now I've got the complete hedgehog here with all these pawns. Uh, bishop e3. Now I don't play the hedgehog that often, so this is a bit of an experiment for me, but I've seen, seen other people play it, and I think I did okay. Bishop d3. It's just a lot of uh, maneuvering going on in this phase. You want to Get your pieces on better squares. Get some pressure on the open C file. Now this knight maybe <coughs> is would be better rerouted somewhere, or something like that. Going to uh, C5 maybe is an idea. Um, it's not ideal where it is blocking the bishop there, but in a closed position you have time for rerouting. And maybe it's not going to be stable on C5 too because uh, White always has B5 to push it back. Anyway. Uh, different ideas here. My opponent plays bishop f4, putting more pressure on the uh, <clears throat> on my d pawn. I bring my a rook over here. Yeah, yeah. I might have might be better to bring the other rook. <laughs> I'm just thinking at it about it now. If I put this rook on the c file and this rook on the d file, that might be a little more logical. Now the engine is already recommending knight e5. That's another way to block it, but I wasn't sure. I wanted to double my pawns that way. Okay, anyway, I played rook a d8. My opponent goes bishop g3, just dropping back, keeping it on that square. And now uh, knight h5, going after the bishop pair. Ah, looks like that was a good move, an engine-approved move. And uh, so this gives a little edge for um, for black again. Well, let's see, my opponent went to queen c2, and I take, a, take the bishop. So he takes back. It's also damaged the pawn structure around his king, and he can't make immediate use of the h-file here because he's uh, castled. So um, it's looking good for black in this position. Now I get my knight to e5, and I'm not <clears throat> not so worried about him doubling my pawns here. It would just open up the uh, d-file to my advantage, I think. And I'm also putting pressure on this c-pawn. He played bishop to e2, getting off the d-file. And now knight takes c4. Yeah, I could have just grabbed that pawn. <laughs> Don't know why I didn't do that. Anyway, I pushed on with d5 here. And uh, so, yeah, this was uh, this was my chance to really get an edge out of the opening. So I can go ahead and grab that pawn here. He didn't, he didn't bother to defend it, but I didn't bother to take it. So <laughs> we both missed something there. Um, so I play d5. And now he takes my e-pawn. I mean, now he takes my knight on e5. I take back with the queen. Um, the engine points out an interesting idea here. Instead of immediately recapturing, you can throw in the move d4, which is now uh, you're, you're a piece down, but you're attacking two pieces. And the pawn on d4, uh, well, you see what happens after I take the knight. Then he can take this pawn on d5. So it's a way of securing that pawn, 
gaining a tempo, and um, I'm still going to win a piece. So, interesting idea from the computer. Okay, I played queen takes e5, and now he should really just take this pawn and uh, enjoy a slight edge. Um, by he'll he'll create some sort of isolated pawn in the center here, which will be a problem for me. Um, so I didn't play that ideally. I missed a couple chances there. But now my opponent makes a big mistake with uh, f4 here. And already there's some weaknesses in his uh, king side position that I should be able to exploit here with bishop to c5. The idea is uh, if you can force the king to the h-file, my queen is set to come up over here. Uh, well, the bishop is guarding that square right now, but if my king, my queen can get over to the h-file, uh, then there's big trouble here, and you see there's already a huge advantage to uh, to uh, black in this line. I didn't spot that idea. I just uh, retreated my queen, queen to c7. And uh, so we pushed on with e5. And now I took on c4. So he still had, even even at this point, he still had the idea of taking. Uh, but it's not as good now after... Um, yeah, so his chance to his best chance to take was right in this position. So he weakened himself with this move f4. I didn't take full advantage of it, but queen c7 still keeps an edge to black. So he pushes on, and now I grab the pawn. Finally, and uh, he goes bishop f3. I decided to uh, give the check, and I was already thinking of ways to maneuver over here and uh, deliver some mate, but I never, never quite found it, at least not at this phase of the game. So I went ahead and took... I mean, it seems like a slow plan. Cancel that. It seems like a slow plan. Let's see. If I were to just go over here, yeah, it's hard for the queen now to get to the uh, to the king side. If I go to this square, all these squares on the diagonal are controlled by his pawns. So I guess I just have to temporarily give up on the idea of uh, mating his king here. <laughs> but uh, I take the bishop, and this keeps some edge for me. Oh, I am the pawn up. And now I use f6 with the idea of maybe queen to this square and coming over uh, this way to get into the king side. He goes knight to e4, hitting my bishop. Played b5, shoring up these pawns here. It was also an attack on my uh, c pawn. And uh, he plays b4 here, kicking my bishop. I, I like the bishop, so I just move the bishop to d4, hitting his rook. And now he needs to move the rook. I don't know. He played king to g2, yeah. So that's just a blunder. He probably didn't notice that the rook was hanging. I don't believe he meant to give up the exchange there. But you see, even if he plays a, a good move like rook a to... How about d1? I, I like that better than e1. New variation. Um, although the engine was giving rook e1 as a move. But it seems like it makes sense to put pressure on the bishop then I can continue with queen to e7. And um, an exchange on f6. Queen to f7 is what I was thinking, coming over here to give a check to his king. King to g2 now. Fe. Well, I guess I get some continued pressure here. I'm picking up some pawns on the king side, and my bishop is looking pretty active. So a good good position for me overall. But king g2 just gives away the exchange. So I took, and um, he should probably take back, but instead he tries to uh, set up a threat. Um, it's just a little bit slow. I have to be careful, of course, because this knight can move a tempo. Knight f6 is check. Um, but I play f5 and shut down that diagonal, and then there's no no good follow-up from uh, from white. And now he's got, uh, he hasn't got time anymore to take my rook. He's got to move the knight. So he moved uh, knight to g5, Still creating a threat over here, um, and I went queen to e7. Let's see, what's the engine recommending? Rook, rook to uh, d3 here. Yeah, I don't know if queen e7 was the, the most logical way to proceed. I, I mean, my bishop was hanging. I could save my bishop. <clears throat> but knight takes e6 is a, Yeah, okay, this is an annoying threat. Knight takes e6. Okay, so I played queen e7. That's why. That's why I played that. I was defending the uh, e6 pawn. <laughs> Forgot about that. So it keeps an edge. Now he does finally grab my uh, my bishop, and I'm the exchange up here, as well as uh, I have a nice passed pawn over here, which will win in the end game if all else fails. Okay, so 
I uh, continue with rook d3, trying to invade with my rooks. He goes rook h1. You know, h6, kicking his knight away. Drops back to h3. Rook fd8, doubling on the d-file, hoping to come into this square, win the queen. He goes knight f2, which uh, shuts down some of those ideas. I can still get to d2, though. It's a good square for the rook. Queen drops back here. I go queen to b7. Now I'm trying to penetrate uh, on this side, maybe get to this square and come in. Um, somewhere along the d-file, perhaps. He goes rook to d1, and uh, I decide to go ahead and exchange that off <clears throat> and bring the other rook to d3. It still looks like a good square. I've got, I've got pressure on the uh, f3 pawn. He blocks with knight f e3. I mean, he defended pretty resourcefully. He's just down uh, too much material to really hold this game. So I went uh, queen d7, getting on the d-file. He goes g4. Now queen d4 creeping in, putting pressure on the knight. G takes f5. And now I thought, uh, well, my attack is just too strong here. Um, so I'm, I'm just ignoring these threats here because I figure I'm going to break through first. I play, well, it looks like rook d2 strike check is the strongest, but this is still winning. Yeah, rook takes e3. He keeps taking. So, I mean, he has a threat here <laughs> of uh, <laughs> queening in two moves. But uh, now I can do a lot of stuff with check. So starting with rook e2 check, the king went to g3. And now there's actually a mate in six. So let's see. If the king had gone the other way... Oh, yeah. So there's a mate even if the king goes to h3. Just a little bit longer. Okay, but anyway, this is kind of a nice finish. Queen f2 check. King has uh, gets driven further up the board. I check from g2. And uh, king went to f5, trying to escape out this way. But uh, he's blocked in by his own pieces. And now there's nowhere for him to go but here. And that's a checkmate. So a nice finish to the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.